Hello again. A few of you had asked a couple of questions. One was about running a Fluke 115. Of course I have one of those meters but it won't read into the microamps. But I do have the Fluke 17B Plus. This will go down there. I also have the original AM510 that I tested that has a microamp range. And so does my Maztec. I also have this YX360 TRE analog meter. And of course this will read into the microamps as well. I thought for the fun of it I would include the Fluke 101. One of the big complaints about this meter is of course it can't read current. I never quite understood that but you can see I have a 1k ohm resistor in parallel with the input and I'm using that for my shunt. Another person had talked about increasing the current and thinking that that would be a more reasonable test to run. I'm assuming that all the meters would basically be linear so once we kind of understand what the internal resistance is we could basically calculate what the drop is going to be. So what I've done is I've set the current for 300 microamps roughly. This is the maximum I can get out of my test setup right now. You can see I just have this resistive selection box and I'm using this to set the current by adding in a series resistance with these meters and again then this is being driven off of my fluke reference. So let's start with the AM510. Looks like 29.6 millivolts. So this would be roughly a 100 ohm resistor. Again, fairly common. Now the Bryman we had measured last time, I said it was a 100 ohm resistor as well. So this should be roughly the same value. Yep, 29.7. This is the 17B plus. You can see it's 29.4. Our little Fluke 101 should be pretty high. 296. And next for our little analog meter. So, of course, if I go up one more scale, you can see it changes the series resistance quite a bit. So, again, about 100 ohms, 29.2. And the UT61E, which I said was about a 1K ohm resistor, I'm going to expect is going to be 200. And 90 or so Yep, 292 and the last but not least is our Maztec meter and Again looks like a hundred ohm resistor 29.7. Let's have a look at this analog meter You can see it's selected to the 2.5 milliamp DC range and if we use this scale here so this would be 2.5 milliamps, this would be 1 milliamp, this would be 500 microamps. You know it's 5 ticks per division so it, according to this it's a little over 300 microamps. Again not very accurate. If we went up on range again it's just going to rail the meter. What I'll do is set this back to 1 microamp. So again, you can see them all reading basically a microamp. Of course, our little 101, that would be one digit on this meter. If the Fluke 101 actually went down a little lower in the millivolt range, we'd almost be able to pick this up. So looking at the meters with the 100 ohms, these should all be roughly 100 microvolts, which it is. So that's 100. Let's try it with the Bryman. Yep. And our 101, or our 17B plus, you can see, same thing. Of course, this meter is going to be 10 times higher, so it's a millivolt. So when we look at this meter, of course, I've changed the scale for this. Let's just see. So roughly 2 millivolts. So this thing actually uses a 2K shunt. Again, the UT61E should be roughly a millivolt, which it is. And the Maztec should again be roughly 100 microvolts, which it is. So nothing really funny about changing the current to a higher value. Uh, it's basically linear is what I would expect. So this meter by far having the worst burden voltage. You can see... We're at the 50 microamp range 
and the meter just barely deflects if I unplug it I'll plug it back in so this 10 mark here would be 10 microamps and it's one microamp per division and you can see it's reading just a smidge over one microamp again this wouldn't be my tool of choice to make a measurement like this so let's say we wanted to use the Fluke 101 to make this measurement what we could do so what I've got here is just a little amplifier I've got a couple of precision resistors that I had laying around these will be my shunt this is nothing fancy this is just a gain amplifier so this little trimmer is set to adjust the offset voltage of the amplifier let's just hook this thing up you can see I have our little powered shunt attached and if I disconnect it see the Fluke 101 now reads zero if I reattach it you can see we're getting roughly 798 millivolts this is a 100 ohm shunt so if I look across this you can see it's roughly 7.96 millivolts just go ahead and adjust the current down to one microamp and again this is multiplied by 10 so you can see it's roughly uh, 10 millivolts right now go a little bit lower let's uh, double it again this will be roughly 500 nanoamps we'll double it again so this will be 250 nanoamps Again, this is nothing real special. You could build this out of just some junk probably in your drawers. The op amp I'm using is just a 1079. This is really not what you'd want to use for anything like this. Actually, if I was to build something like this, I'd use a chopper stabilized. And I'd set this up as an instrumentation amplifier. And I'd probably add some clamps across this thing. And I might even put a PTC in series with it. But yeah, as you can see, this is actually outperforming our UT61E right now. It's right on par with the majority of the meters, just using the 100 ohm shunt. Hopefully that answers any of your remaining questions. I think that's going to be it for this video. Till the next meter. Later.